the Western Alps. Great landscapes and great geology. But field work is often presented as a heroic act involving great efforts getting up amongst the peaks. But it doesn't need to be like this. Much great geology is accessible to those not inclined to mountaineering. Thanks to the network of cable cars and ski lifts that run during the summer season, especially to serve the booming sport of mountain biking. Let's look at a classic part of alpine geology, using access from cable cars or walking on near horizontal paths. We're off to the French Swiss border. So this is a location called the Croix de Coulet, one of the most famous viewpoints in the Western Alps. Starting here at Champery, part of the Porte du Soleil ski complex, which in summer is one of the Alps' great mountain biking centres, even providing a downhill experience for wheelchair users. Time for some classic alpine field work. So we're here on the edge of these lower hills here, a region called the Pre-Alps. And we're looking at the structure that's between them and the higher parts of the Alps, an area known as the Helvetics. So I've come about a thousand meters above the ski village of Champery, thanks to a ski lift, to look at some remarkable and very famous structures and some really remarkable illustrations from, well, a hundred or so years ago. So those hills there are the Dent du Midi, Look carefully and you can see some spectacular fold structures. These strata are of Cretaceous age with folds. We can pick out some bedding and pick out the axial traces. So let's follow them along. The cliff line runs nearly parallel to the fold axes and we see closures at the far end of these cliffs. It's a pretty noisy crow. Let's look at this fold and its illustration by Leon Colley, of whom more later. So we can trace this layer of limestone, the white layer, around the fold structure. Like this, and other beds too. Again, pick out the fold axial trace. This is the direction of younging, so the lower limb of the fold is upside down. So this long cliff line at the bottom is actually stratigraphy that's upside down. So we've got a major fold system that comes round and down around.
Again, let's look at that on those classic sketches. That white limestone layer, a unit called the Igonian, is coloured light green on this panorama. So this is the front of a major alpine structure, the Morkla Nap, one of the most famous structures anywhere in the world. So we're just looking at the frontal folds that we see in that cross section. This view into the Morkla Nap is actually rather unconventional. It's more conventional to look at folds, whatever the scale, side on, in profile, but our view has been onto the front of the structure, looking onto the hinges of the frontal folds, which are eroded out, so you see cuts into these hinges. So back to the real rocks. It's worth just considering the structure and its illustration here. Following along through the Dent Blanche, up to the mouth of the Susant Cori, and then on to the Dent du Midi. So this is the nose of the Morkla Nap. This fantastic panorama was put together to illustrate this memoir for the geological map of Switzerland and was drawn by Ailey Gagnemann professor of paleontology at Lausanne. The memoir was published in 1928, but it resulted from the PhD mapping a decade earlier by this character, Francois Delois. These are his cross sections. But why a decade delay? Well, after his PhD, Delois went to South America to work for the Royal Dutch Oil Company, a forerunner of Shell but Deloitte is better known for a scientific scandal that purported to find a new human-like primate in the Venezuelan jungle. It was a notorious scientific fake. So the memoir is on a far less controversial subject, his PhD on alpine geology, and it was essentially written up as a memoir in his absence. All of it crazy. So let's get back to our story of the Morkla Nap. Let's go now and look at the style of folding in the core of the nap. Consider Deloitte's serial sections and just pick one of them. Here are the frontal folds we've been looking at, while to the southeast, the internal folds of the Morkla Nap here have a very particular form. So, classic alpine structures and some fantastic illustrations from a long time ago. Wonderful geology, and it's all really accessible, especially if you take that cable car up from Champery. So our next stop is over beyond the hills and up to a major hydroelectric barrage right on the Swiss-French border. A bit of a tourist destination and it gives fantastic views out across Mont Blanc and the high mountains of this part of the Alps. This is Emerson and the Barberine Valley that now holds the reservoir provides a fantastic section right into the base of the Morkla Nap and it's all quite easy to see and access using a track carved into the hillside that contours around the lake. So again, there's no need for mountain climbing. It's time now to introduce our next geologist from the past, though nothing like the controversial figure of Delois. It's Leon Collet, professor at Geneva, and well known for promoting alpine geology to the English speaking world through his writings, especially this book. His memoir for the Swiss Geological Map series published in 1943 is a masterpiece. Spectacular illustrations, sketches of hillsides, his own cross sections, 
and we can use all of this work by Colle as our guide as we explore the internal structure of the Morkland app. But using these illustrations and the actual landscapes can be a little confusing because the view portrayed in the sketches and we'll see together in the field will keep switching. So I'll try and help. We've seen from Deloitte that the internal folds of the Morkland app overlie crystalline basement that has been tipped up to dip to the right on these profiles, that's to the northwest. So here are Collet serial sections, and now we've switched our view round. This time, northwest is on the left. Let's just concentrate on these profiles. Here's the basement dipping to the left, northwest, and we're going to see this structure and the folds in the brown and blue, which are Jurassic strata. So back to Emerson Reservoir, and our view <laughs> again is switched back northwest to the right. Here's Collet's wonderful sketch. The world has changed a bit since he drew this in 1935. This glacier has melted away. And the reservoir is filled up. So, northwest to the right, basement, the unconformity, a thrust that carries the Morkland app. And here it is all on the ground, visible from our contouring path around the lake. So let's continue our journey into the nap by walking towards the head of the reservoir. The head wall there contains wonderful folds. So let's take a closer look. These are in Jurassic strata. and they're essentially recumbent, the axial surfaces lying flat. And the fold styles change from layer to layer. So quite complicated deformation in the core of the Morkland app. And here's Colley's representation of the internal structures linked on to the structures we saw earlier on at the Croix de Coulet. The Morkland app, a classic alpine structure. These viewpoints have all been really accessible. At Emerson, near the dam, you could even hire an e-bike, which makes getting along that contouring track even easier. So great structures, and fantastic historical illustrations that help us interpret the landscape. Classic Alpine geology. So back in the 1980s, I came across a copy of Collet's memoir in the departmental library in Leeds, and it inspired me to undertake some fieldwork looking at the evolution of these structures on the ground. And I wrote it up as a chapter in this book, which is dedicated to the work and in memory of Dave Elliott. So if you'd like to get my take on the structural evolution of fault thrust complexes and of the area itself, why not check out the paper? And you can find the link in the text below. So thank you for watching this film, and I hope you will be inspired to go and get these great views of Alpine geology. The viewpoints are all really accessible.